I'm going to show you how diagonalizing a matrix using eigenvectors works by doing an example where the three eigenvalues are distinct. Now this 3x3 three three example should be general enough that if you see this, uh, you will understand how uh, diagonalization is done in general. First, step one, you have to find the eigenvalues, of course. Uh, to find the eigenvalues, you have to calculate the determinant of a minus lambda i and set it equal to zero. And for a 3x3 three three matrix, you have to do uh, either row expansion or column expansion. So you do this times the minor matrix, and then uh, this times the other minor, but this time it's a minus, so it's plus, minus, plus. So you do this, and uh, the remaining is some boring algebra. Uh, and if you work hard, you'll see that you have this. And then from here, uh, you may need to use something like uh, synthetic division to figure out all the roots. So for example, if I plug in 1, I see that this becomes 0, because 1 minus 2 is negative 1, negative 1 minus 11 is negative 12, plus 12 is 0. So if you put 1, negative 2, negative 11, 12, then you put 1, 1 comes down, 1 times 1 is 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 12, negative 12 goes to 0. So this is called synthetic division. Uh, it's really handy, so if you don't know that, uh, please review it. And then uh, this one represents x squared minus x minus 12. So that also factors as uh, x minus 4, x plus 3. So that's how you get these answers. Okay. Now, once you get all the eigenvalues, remember we got the lambda as 1 and negative 3 and 4. You have to find the eigenvectors. And eigenvectors are like vectors where uh, if, if you replace lambda by the values that we just obtained, we want to find vectors where this times this gives you 0. So we plug in 1 to uh, this a minus lambda i, and you get this matrix. And uh, to solve this times some vector equals to 0, something in here, uh, sometimes you need to, to look further, but sometimes the answer is right, right there. See, if you multiply this third one times 2, it's exactly the same as the negative of this one, right? So you can see that if you multiply 1, 0, 2, this gives you 0, 0, 0. So, uh, we find that 1, 0, 2 is an eigenvector for lambda equal to 1. Okay, next uh, we need the following. Uh, lambda equals to negative 3. You plug in negative 3. And this time the problem is I don't see any such simple relationship. So this is a little bit more involved. In that case, what you can do is you can take the row reduced echelon form. Okay, so this is row reduced echelon form. And uh, you do this, you, you turn it into row reduced echelon form by making use of the uh, Gaussian elimination. And uh, that's also very uh, basic stuff in matrices. So if you don't know that, you should, you should review that as well. Uh, you could do this by hand, it's not that bad, but uh, since uh, the goal is just to demonstrate how this entire thing is done, I'm going to use this website where uh, it's something in emathhelp.net. I just googled uh, RREF calculator and I, it got me to this. And uh, you just choose the size of the matrix and I just plugged in the value 6, negative 4, 4 and all that. And I click calculate and not only it does the calculation, uh, it gives you, it shows all the intermediate steps. So all the intermediate steps are shown, and this is the final row reduced echelon form. The important thing is, uh, if you have something times ABC equals to zero, uh, where this is supposed to be this, even if you do the row reduction, row reduced echelon form, uh, the equation still is true. So you can re replace this by its RREF. That's the trick, okay? So we, we have this times some matrix ABC equals to zero, and uh, that means one times A plus two times, uh, zero times B plus two times C equals to zero, 
and one times it, one times b plus two c equals to zero. So if you set c as negative one, then a and b will be two. So that's one solution. Uh, after all, we're just trying to find one solution, not all solutions. So we got the next eigenvector. Now let's move on. Do the same thing for lambda equals to four. Uh, calculate the ref, and then uh, think about what that means, and we find that this is the eigenvector for lambda equals to four. Once you get these, then uh, what you can do is you write all the eigenvectors you found and place them side by side, and that's going to be your p. And using this, we are going to diagonalize this matrix A. Okay, so let me show you how that's done. Uh, what you want to calculate is AP and PD, where D is the matrix, uh, it's a diagonal matrix with eigenvalues on, on the diagonal, okay? All right, so you can actually do this calculation, and uh, if you trust me, what happens is because, because this part right here is an eigenvector with eigenvalue negative three, and this one had one and that was four. Uh, what you end up is, if you multiply this matrix to this, it will just give you this, which is, this is really negative three times two to negative one. Okay, so this this is uh, negative three times this. So, and, and then one times one, zero, two is this, and four times this will give you that, okay? So you can check the actual calculation if you don't trust me, but if you actually do, uh, you will find that uh, the matrix you get will be uh, column-wise the result of what you would get if you think about the uh, eigenvector equation. Eigenvector, I mean, this is equivalent to saying a minus lambda i times v equals to zero, right? So uh, you, using this relationship, you can verify all these, okay? Now, uh, furthermore, if you multiply these two matrices, what happens is that if you have a diagonal matrix with some numbers like that, this makes the entire first column to be multiplied by negative three, so you get this. One makes the entire second column to be multiplied by one. Four makes the entire third column to be multiplied by four. So again, you get the same effect. Okay? And now this is a very interesting conclusion because what we just verified is that AP is equal to PD. So AP equals to PD. And therefore, if you multiply P inverse both sides, these two will cancel and you end up with P inverse AP equals a diagonal matrix, okay? So in our spe specific case, we have proved that there's identity between these two and, and this is your, our, our matrix P. And if you take the inverse of this, you get the P inverse A times p equal to this diagonal matrix, and we have finished the diagonalization. Now, one more additional comment I want to make is that uh, the diagonalization is not unique. Uh, the matrix p can be changed. Uh, the orders could change, then, then these values will change, right? Uh, also, the diagonal values, that could also change. So uh, the diagonalization is not unique. Uh, but uh, when you actually get it, the final diagonalization will have all the eigenvalues on the diagonal. And another remark I want to make is, uh, although I said uh, you can inverse P, uh, you might not be sure, and that really depends on whether the matrices you, you wrote down are linearly independent. If they are linearly independent, then P inverse does exist. And uh, What's also true is that if you have a set of set of vectors whose eigenvalues are set of eigenvectors whose eigenvalues are all different, then they are linearly independent. So, uh, if you can find uh, n distinct eigenvalues, you always have this matrix P. Now, when you have equal eigenvalues, that that's a little more tricky. Uh, sometimes you do have you still have some linearly independent eigenvectors. But uh, unfortunately, sometimes that doesn't always work. In that case, the best you can hope for is something called Jordan canonical form uh, using generalized eigenvectors and so on and so. Okay, so if you're interested to learn about Jordan canonical forms, uh, please uh, watch the other video that I make.